you put one foot in front of the other and you keep walking forward and eventually you'll get where you were headed even if you didn't exactly know the way. Hi, my name is Meredith. I'm a writer. Welcome to today's video and also to the clean side of my kitchen. It's the afternoon, so as I get this update started, I'm also going to get my coffee started. So today's video is just going to be more of like an update on my writing and life because it is now almost three quarters of the way through the year. What I would say is I'm not on track. At this point, I've gotten done about a third of what I thought I would be able to get done this year, which is a little bit disappointing, especially because I did think my timeline was realistic to begin with. But ultimately, I had never developmentally edited a book before, and I didn't know that just the thought process takes so much time. Like, I've spent months just brainstorming. I think the other thing that I have to keep in mind is that I also added a lot of things to my plate this year. So I added Instagram to my plate. It's been really great. I'm really excited about the community that's going on there. But that's like a whole extra job on top of everything. However, it's like a really, really awesome thing that's contributing to, you know, being an author in general. So it's not completely necessary to be an author, but it's it's the way that I'm choosing to go about it. And I'm very happy with it. Another thing I started this year, um, only in May, so it's only been a few months, but is Fiverr. And so that's not taking up a ton of my time, like a crazy amount, but it is a whole new thing that's added to my plate. And before Fiverr, as I was kind of ramping up to Fiverr, I was doing a ton of beta reading. So I was like reading and critiquing and editing the structural components and the character components of other people's novels. And so now I'm getting paid to do that. And so I've been kind of having that extra, like helping other people in their writing on top of all the other work that I'm trying to get done and especially writing my own book. I need to check this, make sure this is okay. I think it's good, I think it's good. Nowadays, this is what a lot of people run into, which is that being an author doesn't just mean writing. Like I think the way that we've kind of romanticized the idea of being a writer and just staying in your writing cave all day and everyone leaving you alone and you can just play in your imaginary world, like that's not really how it is right now. Like you have to market yourself. You have to find other income streams because you know writing may not support you. It may not even work out. Like it may not work out for a decade. You have to find other ways to be in the writing world. But what happens if you don't get the huge book deal that you want? Those things press in on your time, on your creative energy, and also on your motivation. And I'm so glad that I'm making progress in those areas towards those goals. But it has meant that I just don't have as much energy for the writing. Like last year was an insanely productive year for me, writing wise, but I was drafting. Like I drafted for six months. And so it's just different. So that's my three quarters of the way through the year update. So now let's go talk about some of the updates, some of the fun things happening in my writing life that I am excited to talk about. Here's a sneak peek at next week's video. I am very excited for this one. You will see it in due time. Okay, so let's talk about my works in progress. Currently, I have two that I actually have significant progress on. One is an adult, like, steampunk sci-fi. I'm still trying to pin down the genre on that one. So it has a natural structure already as a trilogy. I know that that's what that story needs. And so I've kind of put that off a little bit. I haven't really planned anything past the first book. And that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy working on my other project that I've worked a whole lot more on, which is my low fantasy project that's like whimsical and cottagecore and just really such a joy to work on. Up until now, it has been a standalone. And the reasons why are basically that there's this really great mirroring that happens from like the very first scene in the prologue to the very last scene. Thematically, it wraps up. In my brain, it's the end of their story. Like, I don't know what comes next for them. It's always been a completely blank slate. And I was content with that because standalone is so much easier to handle because I didn't have to worry about future books and tying things in. Like this book being a standalone is a place for me to practice writing, to practice crafting one good story. If I can do this high quality, then I can expand later. So I'm happily working on this standalone with no question of whether or not there are more books to the series or more to the story. And then one day, three days ago, I was on Pinterest looking for inspiration for my book and I see this picture. Now I swear I've scrolled by this picture a hundred times. Like I've seen this over and over and over and over. And it reminded me of something that I'd actually written in my very first original draft. 
and that's this draft. If you followed me for a while, you know about this. I discovery wrote this as the very first thing that I did when I kind of started my writing journey uh, about two years ago now. So many of these ideas didn't get used. And then I see this picture on Pinterest and it connects a new idea to one of these old ideas in here that I scrapped, but that I actually loved and was so, so sad to have to scrap. I think all writers have experienced this moment where like this idea is coming to you and you know there's a flood behind it. And if you don't stop and take it in, like it's gonna pass you by. So I did, I stopped and I took it in and I wrote 5,000 words of notes. And I basically planned out the overall structure of books two and three. And so where these characters' stories had been a completely blank slate for me, like I didn't even care what happened to them next. Now all of a sudden, there are two more books that perfectly fit after this. That's just like, this is the rest of their story. And I don't have to change the first book in order to do it. It's just, here's what happens next. And then it gives them not just a poetic ending, but a real ending. And I really, really like that idea. This book being a standalone has served its purpose for me as a writer. I learned how to write one cohesive story. Of course, now the project is a little bit more daunting. Now I have to think, am I laying all the groundwork for the rest? But also I just need to keep editing book one and making book one do justice internally. And then I'm gonna worry about the second and third books. And so I need to not just get caught in dreamland, but to also work because then when I get to the page, it's just like, oh boy, these same old words. Like it's not these beautiful, you know, pearly ideas that I see in my mind. Now it's the words that are imperfect and kind of rough. I need to buckle down and get those words to reflect what's in my brain because what's in my brain is really working for me right now. And I have a new strategy for how I'm gonna do that, which will be in another video. So stay tuned for that. As for fiction, my updates are that I have just finished the inheritance cycle. No, <laughs> that's something very different. I did finish that long, long time ago. No, this is something very different. I finished the inheritance games where a girl inherits $46 billion and she has to figure out why she inherited it, what to do with it, and how to counter all of the trouble and conflict that comes with that inheritance. And she has to stay in the house of the billionaire with his four grandsons and you can guess what that leads to. I absolutely adore the first book in this series. I thought it was just like the most engaging, like tension-filled book I'd read in a very long time. It's very clever um, and I, I just really, really liked it. And so I rated it very high. The next books in the series are good. They're still really good and entertaining, but I feel like they just kind of took the games that were in the first book and kind of convoluted them. There's a lot of stuff with like family trees that just gets like bizarre. Real people I feel like don't have these many <laughs> very strange branches and family trees. But overall, I thought it was a really fun series. So if you're looking for a book that exemplifies really tight plotting and mystery that is very, very complex, then this would be a great book to read. And it also just is really keeps you on your toes, very full of tension. So like it does a lot of things really, really well. I think what it probably could have used more on is character development. After a while, we kind of lost her deep point of view and it was more about just like clue hunting. And so I would have liked a little bit more for her and who she really was to be very present. It became more like she was just a vehicle to view the mystery plot, which is fun too, but I think you can go deeper with character. Bonus books, The Body Keeps the Score. This really goes into the other part of my personality and my life, which is science, which I don't really talk about on this channel. This book, there is so much. I, I don't know how to digest this book. I feel out of my depth with trying to evaluate whether or not what's going on in the book, what he's saying, is 100% accurate. I don't know. I think I just, there are things in there that I'm like, this is insanely insightful. This is really helpful for thinking about life and human behavior and all that kind of stuff. And then there are some things where I'm just like, I would like to know more or I would like to find some more support for this idea because it does sound a little wonky. But anyway, uh, very interesting read. My final update, I don't know if I mentioned this at all ever. I feel like I just kind of like forgot to talk about this, but I finished the Akatar series. Um, if you want me to talk about that, let me know. I have a lot of thoughts on Akatar. I do. Can I say general things right now? Let me think. Yes, I can. I really liked it. I had a very, very enjoyable time reading through it. Some books were like absolutely amazing, engaging. Just, I just adored them. And other books were genuinely really disappointing. Also, it's the best 
depiction of uh, mental health arcs that I've seen in the genre. Like it's really done well and I love that. So um, that's definitely a point in its favor. Next up is Throne of Glass, which I'm very excited to get to. Okay, that's all for my reading, writing, and life update today. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to see more writing content from me. I also have a Fiverr link down below for developmental edits and book coaching, so check out that if you're interested. Happy writing and I will see you in another video. Bye.